Good day, Grade 12s. My name is Kaden Mazokere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks, and welcome to 1.4 under market failure. Well, since the topic is market failure, I might as well start by defining market failure. Well, my favorite definition is failure of markets to allocate resources at an optimum level. Now, that means uh, under, cons under supply or oversupply. So there's a tendency of free operating markets to either oversupply or undersupply. So we have a scenario here. Study the graph below and answer the questions that follow. So let's, as we study this graph, it says externalities and it doesn't tell us whether this is positive or negative. And uh, we know that externalities are costs or benefits to a third party. Uh, what can I say? Uh, maybe which are not included in the in the market price. Yeah, that would make sense. So when we have costs spilling over to 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 third parties, uh, we also call them a neighborhood effects. Okay, so if a cost or a benefit spills over to a third party, and uh, it is not included. In the in the market price of that particular good or service then we call that externalities because there it's spilling over to a third party so things spill over positively or negatively depending on the nature of the good that is being consumed now that said market failure as i said is failure of markets to allocate resources at an optimum level there's a tendency of markets to oversupply demerit goods and undersupply merit goods and demerit goods have a negative externality, like it spills over in a negative way, and that spillover is not included in the price, so that's market failure. Then, <clears throat> and go, because basically, if that uh, spillover effect was to be quantified and added, it would cause the, the, the quantity supplied to decrease, which would be the optimum allocation so basically that happens when there's government intervention and government does it in a couple of ways. Okay. Then the flip side is uh, a merit good, which is deemed to be good. Uh, examples will be education, healthcare. Now the external, the externality there is a positive one. Uh, the spillover effects are positive to consuming something that is good. And that is, if that could be quantified and added, more would be actually supplied and uh, the price, yes, would go up. So we'll see it. In this particular case, let's try to analyze to see uh, if this particular graph represents a positive or negative externality. Because there's just one distinction. Uh, <clears throat> what I can say is one has two supply curves and one demand curve. The other one is two demand curves and one supply curve. Now to give you a clue as to which is which, <clears throat> we need to know like what the supply curve represents <clears throat> and what the demand curve represents. So the, the demand curve will represent the benefit and uh, the supply curve will represent the, the, the cost. Okay. So now if we look at this particular scenario here, this will be uh, the marginal private benefit, okay, uh, which is equal to the marginal social benefit. If we were to add something here, uh, the D would be the marginal private benefit, meaning the benefit to the individual consuming whatever this good is, is equal to the marginal social benefit as an uh, uh, the, the benefit to this individual is the total benefit to the whole community. So which goods are only benefiting the people that are consuming them? Well, you realize that if you drink alcohol, say I drink alcohol, uh, I will benefit because I'll get drunk and say I like that feeling. Uh, if it's uh, cigarettes, I smoke it and then whatever it is that whatever enjoyment I get from it, I benefit. But how does the society benefit from that? Nothing. No way. So you'll see that <clears throat> there's no benefit in you smoking. There's no benefit to the society. There's only benefit to you. So since you are part of the society, the marginal uh, private benefit is equal to the marginal social benefit. That's the whole benefit to the whole community because you are the only person that benefits. 
let's move on to supply. I said supply is representing cost. So the initial one is this one, SEM. Now this E1 can be a bit confusing. Uh, they flipped this around. This E1 should be here and this E should be here. So we have D and S and I say this is benefit to the individual, which is benefit to the whole society. Now here is the cost by incurred by the person that's uh, going to buy the item. So we would say this is marginal private cost. Now, <clears throat> does smoking affect the society? Yes, it does. Does drinking affect the society? Yes, it does. But now, is that effect included in the price? No. So this represents a negative externality because this S here represents the marginal private cost and this S1 represents the marginal social cost. So uh, it's, it's the cost to the individual, which is the cost that you incur to buy the cigarette and then the cost incurred by, um, what can I say, third parties, people that you smoke in their presence they'll be negatively affected by your smoking. And uh, so basically that's the marginal uh, social cost. So this shaded area here represents the dead weight loss, uh, which in simple terms I can say is the loss of societal economic welfare due to the production or consumption of a good or a service. Now, with that said, what questions could be asked? Well, which which externality is this? Well, it's positive. What does the shaded area represent? What's the initial price, which is P here, and quantity, which is Q? And um, uh, maybe what does S stand for? It stands for marginal private cost. D stands for marginal private benefit, which is equal to marginal social benefit. Uh, if you don't understand this, I have videos on this. You can watch them. Maybe you understand in depth. Now let's get to the questions in this particular graph. What type of externality is shown by the graph? Yes, I answered. This is negative externality. The reason is we have two supply curves and uh, which externality has a uh, cost to the society? Well, it's obviously a negative externality. Uh, a positive would have two demand curves because it would have a marginal private benefit just like this one, but then there will be another benefit which is to the society. So there will be another demand curve which represents the marginal social benefit. So the benefit to the individual will be shown by this D, which is marginal private benefit, which is maybe you learn you acquire education, you even get recognition, you get a degree for that. Now, as you interact with the community, the community is going to benefit from your education, but they did not incur any cost in your education. So that's why we have the one supply curve, which represents the marginal private cost, which is equal to the marginal social cost, because it does not cost the society for you to go to school. Okay, so basically that's that. Explain the term externalities. I think I did. I said it's cost or benefits. And we must be clear that we say all benefits because if you just say cost, you are no longer defining externality. You know what you're defining now? You are now defining negative externality. If you just say benefits, you are no longer defining externalities. You are now defining positive externalities. So you need to be clear. So externalities is cost or benefits to third parties which are not included in the market price of a good or service. So these costs or benefits are what affect third parties, if I may say. We also call them spillover effects or neighborhood effects. So they spill over positively or negatively depending on the good itself that was consumed. Now, <clears throat> what is indicated by the shaded area? Well, I said it's dead weight loss, which is, um, uh, as I said, the loss to the whole society. The next one is how can the above externality cause market failure? Okay, so it takes us back to what market failure is. It's failure of markets to allocate resources at an optimum level. With that said, um, 
how is this causing does it say how does this cause yes well it causes an externality because uh the the market is producing q instead of q1 so in a way it's it's oversupplying something that is uh socially harmful okay markets are oversupplying in in a way they are failing to allocate resources at an optimum level the optimum level in this case would be q1 well this good should be consumed but in moderation but here markets are oversupplying this so basically that's how markets are failing in this case so and the reason is they fail to quantify the external cost that uh, smoking or drinking or whatever it is has to the society so any two points that you can give uh, will earn you some marks let's look at our answers right number one uh, what type of externality is shown yes we said it's negative well it didn't want you to motiv uh, to motivate your answer but yes i did then explain the term externality well these are costs or benefits this is important to third parties this is also important which are not included in the market price Yes, this other term for it, spillover effects or their third party effects. I said neighborhood effects. Right. Uh, what is indicated by the shaded area? Well, I gave deadweight loss. Well, you can say welfare loss. You can say that's the external cost. Then how can the above externality uh, cause market failure? Well, if the cost of the externality was included in the price of the firm, in the in in the price, the firm will produce less. I I don't like this answer. Uh, then let's see. The market is producing at Q, which is more than yes. This I like, more than what the society desires. Yes, I like this. Then the market has failed to allocate resources pro properly. Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking to just give this, uh, especially the first one they had to, they were supposed to rephrase this and put it better. Okay, this has brought us to the end of our video. And uh, as usual, like, subscribe, and join me in the next video that I'm going to make. Thank you. God bless.